Uh, while making this video, I realized how bad I was at making uh, explaining software videos. So be prepared for um, it might not be the best work I've done this, or it's it's not my best work. But um, be kind. Uh, I also forgot to mention the main thing. That's uh, the main great thing about Engmul, and that's that you can do small changes, run the simulations, and compare. That's the big thing with Engmul. So you can change a little bit of the exhaust length or um, maybe a bigger carb or change the port arrangement a little bit, uh, smaller ports, larger ports. And then you can run back-to-back -back tests and see the results instantly. That's the great thing about Engmod. I think I forgot to mention that. But anyways, uh, watch it. Uh, I, you will, it will give you a good, good overview of uh, what Engmod is. And, um, and as I said, not my best work, but watch it. <laughs> Welcome to this quick showcase of uh, Engmod uh, 2T or Engmod 2 stroke. Uh, it's not going to be uh, a tutorial, but uh, just a little uh, um, show, just to show uh, what the software is and what it can do for you, and uh, what you need uh, to, or what inputs you need uh, for it to work. So. Um, I, I hope this uh, the syncing here will um, work because I'm recording myself with the uh, ordinary Sony uh, action cam and uh, I'm screen recording at the same time. I uh, I did ah, blah. Okay, so um, uh, let's just uh, start up here. Engmod um, is um, uh, made up of uh, three parts or four, but three main parts. Uh, the three parts are um, uh, that 2T, which is uh, where you create the model of the engine. Uh, then you have uh, the Engmod 2T, which is the simulator, and that's where you run the simulations of the models you have created in that 2T. And last, or almost last, but mainly what you will mainly use as the last thing. Is post 2T, which is the post processor for Engmod. It says it right there. Uh, then you have Wave Viewer, which also is a cool function uh, or a feature or a small <laughs> program uh, where you can basically watch the waves in your pipe or other parts of the engine as how they move. Um, okay, so I'll just uh, start with uh, that 2T and I'll show you. Uh, what it what it's like so uh, first up you will be um, you will see this screen uh, which uh, uh, prompts you to create a new project or select existing project uh, as I have uh, an existing project I will choose my existing project and that project is called SPX 20 so and accept. Okay, so uh, I can just go quickly go through all the um, all the parts here, or uh, or um, ah, what do you call it? Anyways, parts. Okay, the first one, engine data. So here you have to put in stuff like if it's a uh, turbocharged or supercharged, or if it's naturally aspirated, spark ignition or compression ignition, glow plug. Uh, if it's a V engine, a flat engine, doesn't really matter when it's a single cylinder. Uh, number of cylinders, bore stroke, conrod length, um, pin offset, uh, good, I can't pronounce that, Gudgeon pin offset, the piston pin or the small end pin uh, offset, so how much it's offset in the piston. You can also use that parameter, or that could also be if the cylinder is shifted on. Um, relative to the crank, so it's not if it's if the cylinder is not directly uh, centered above the crank, you can uh, insert the offset in here. Uh, okay, keep on moving. <laughs> I wasn't supposed to start uh, blabbering about uh, all this. whatever. Uh, <laughs> okay, basic engine type: if it's uh, fan cooled or uh, water cooled, or if it's an industrial engine or performance engine. Um, if it's a piston layout, 
conventional parallel piston, which almost all engines are, stepped piston. Mo I think that feature is mostly just put in there because of the rigor uh, thing. Uh, bearing type, plane, roller, or uh, if you have some um, friction loss data, you can use user defined. Uh, crankcase compression ratio with a compression ratio calculator where you can put in the measured volume and it will um, spit out the com um, uh, compression ratio for you. Um, combustion chamber, compression ratio, squish clearance, squish area, piston dome radius. Uh, then it's the simulation data and this is uh, all the other stuff is uh, familiar for most of you and I, I have to say that uh, Engmod 2 is um, it's really a great maybe the best software I think for um, modeling and simulating and um, developing a two-stroke engine uh, but it's not something for a beginner so if you don't have quite high knowledge in how the two-stroke engine works and what makes it work and why and stuff like that you will have uh, difficulties using this program because um, uh, there's a lot of traps you can do a lot of things that wouldn't work in um, real life that could produce uh, good results in uh, the simulator just because you didn't use common sense or common sense for someone that is uh, uh, <laughs> that know stuff about two-stroke engines so but I digress anyways so here you have to um, <clears throat> inputs are uh, max power RPM. So your the max where you think max power RPM will be. This uh, parameter has uh, um, it uh, decides uh, how the um, temperature max temperature in um, especially the pipe are where max temp are um, are <laughs> uh, target uh, brake mean effective pressure. Uh, there's also a calculator there, so you can put in the power output target and it will uh, tell you how much uh, brake mean effective pressure in, uh, you'll need to get to that target. Uh, exhaust pressure transduce transducer, inlet pressure transducer and number of iteration cycles uh, all have uh, to do with uh, the simulate simulator part. So the pressure transduce transducers, if you leave them at zero, it's at the exhaust port and at the inlet inlet port you can move them out from the port I just keep them at the port uh, number of iteration cycles are how many cycles the simulator will run and it needs uh, a specific, a some amount of cycles to get it to stabilize uh, I think default is 15 and I just keep it at 15 and that seems to work if you can't get your model to stabilize so the numbers are all over the place you can use more iteration cycles but it will take more time uh, throttle opening from 0 to 1, I just leave that at 1 and test it, That's so you test it at wide open throttle. Uh, yep, that's it for the engine data. Exhaust port, here you basically can, you choose if it's a single or a bridged or a profile type, the profile, uh, single type, single port, uh, bridge type is a uh, dual port with a bridge in the middle. Profile type is where you can uh, basically dis uh, design the port by uh, by entering uh, widths and heights fr uh, from many different points along the port. Uh, but if it's a simple shape, it's just easier to use a single type or a bridge type and enter the width, uh, the uh, top width and the lower width and uh, the radiuses on the corners. Uh, anyways, um, if it has uh, auxiliary ports or not, if it has a power valve or not. And if you choose a power valve, you can uh, enter the different uh, RPM points where the power valve or not, how much opening the power valve is at, at those points. Uh, and all these parameters are just uh, simple stuff like uh, uh, duration, so uh, port window open degrees after top dead center, port window close, full close after top dead center, flow width at top of window, flow width at bottom, top edge radius, bottom edge radius, top corner radius, bottom corner radius, passage length, passage and diameter. Uh, and there's a neat calculator at passage and diameter which uh, calculates for you what uh, uh, passage length and the passage end diameter uh, is supposed to be the best for your port size. So that's a great guideline.
to go off um, the number it spits out when you use that calculator uh, exhaust roof angle and main passage at off main passage so the how much the whole duct is slanted downwards um, same thing for the auxiliary ports that's about it uh, transfer ports same thing here you just enter in the durations or when it opens when it closes and the heights and the, um, and the radiuses of uh, all the transfers and if it's uh, sharp or square or um, and uh, yeah if the transfer passage inlet configuration is sharp square or round so if uh, where your transfers down into the, in the crankcase where the transfers begin the transfer ducts begin if there are sharp corners or um, square corners so sharp and knife edge sharp, uh, square if there's no rounding off of uh, the corners or the, the mainly the divider i think around a rounded divider and um, yeah so <laughs> yeah uh, transfer passage shape configuration if it's uh, open so there's uh, so it means that the transfer duct is open so the piston is the inner wall of the transfers uh, straight if the transfers go straight up and then into the bore or if the if it, they are teacup shaped so they travel uh, with a radius or f several radiuses from the crankcase into the board. Uh, scavenging model. Um, you can read, oh, and I also have to mention that the uh, Engmold 2 t has a, a great uh, help file, um, extensive help file with all the information you need to, um, to enter the right parameters and measure things correctly. And explanations for all the things there. So the scavenging model is basically you have to choose a scavenging model that best um, suits your engine or that is most similar to your engine. So uh, and in the help file there are uh, pictures or diagrams of the port layout and uh, the configuration. So you just choose the one that uh, seems to match your engine or cylinder the best. So if you have an uh, old air cooled uh, moped cylinder you won't choose something like the Aprilia RSW125 uh, or the Honda RS125 because uh, uh, that's they have really great scavenging uh, uh, or they have good very good scavenging you would choose something like uh, maybe I think yeah some of them are really bad some are really good choose the one that best uh, suits your or uh, is most similar to your cylinder read the help file. Uh, inlet port, you choose from piston port, reed valve, cylinder reed valve, roll through disc valve, roll through shaft valve, roll through drum valve, or no inlet port. I think that's maybe if there's uh, direct, directly uh, inlet is the transfers, could be, not sure. Anyways, uh, choose the one you have, and uh, if you choose piston port, you have to uh, basically enter the same stuff you entered for the exhaust port and transfer ports and also uh, when it opens when it closes the width and the height and the radiuses um, in that port uh, so uh, read valve you have to choose uh, read thickness uh, or first if it's a case read or cylinder read and uh, you have to choose if there's stopper plates if there's uh, one sided or two sided or four sided block number of pedals, thickness, width of pedals, free length of pedals, uh, what kind of pedal material you have, the Young's modulus, so the stiffness of the pedals, density of pedal material, damping factor, uh, and there's a lot of stuff you can, uh, have to enter about the real valves here, or you can enter. Uh, okay, that's the inlet, uh, ex exhaust type and data. Uh, this is where you enter all the dimensions for your uh, exhaust pipe and it spits out a drawing and there and you can see uh, the uh, pipe to cylinder volume ratio and the total volume of the pipe uh, the tuned length from piston face to end of reverse cone so from here to here uh, or from here if uh, you have to think that the, the duct in the exhaust port also is a part of it, uh, or you have to remember. Um, uh, piston to end of header as a percentage of tune length, 
and piston to end of diffuser as a percentage of tune length. Uh, return. So um, here you also have the choice to uh, have the program design a pipe for you. And you can choose from Blair type, modern pipe, or high performance pipe. Uh, and then you have to put in um, what bulk temperature you think is in the pipe. And it says 500 degrees, low power or water cooled pipe, 700, high power and or wrapping. This uh, diffuser horn coefficient, not quite sure uh, what that, uh, how that, what it is basically, I haven't used it. Uh, tailpipe diameter coefficient, that's uh, how small your stinger is. So it says uh, 0.6 road racing, 0.7 motocross, 0.75 enduro type engines. Center section diameter coefficient, not sure how it uh, affects things. You should uh, just try for yourself and see. Uh, yep, and it spits out the tune length and the volume and the pipe to cylinder volume ratio. Uh, yep, that's the pipe. Uh, then it's the inlet type, same as the pipe, just for the inlet. And uh, it also spits out a drawing of your inlet. Combustion data. This one is uh, needs some explaining. So uh, first of all, you have three different combustion models: burn rate prescribed, adjusted weave function, and turbulent model. Uh, how you should use this program is that you use turbulent model, and uh, you choose uh, first choose how many many num num how many RPM points uh, you should have in your map. Uh, that's basically so uh, RPM point where you can uh, set timing and um, air fuel ratio. Um, those are probably known for you. Uh, delay, duration, vibe A and vibe M. You don't really have to care about those numbers. Uh, there's uh, some default numbers there uh, when you open the, it for the first time. Uh, what you do is you just choose turbulent model, then you choose. Um, and your uh, RPM points and your timing at those points and you leave the uh, air fuel ratio and all the other uh, parameters uh, untouched um, and you run that model uh, in turbulent mode in the simulator and you export what you got from uh, or the combustion file from that <laughs> simulation run and you ex uh, uh, open it uh, in, in the um, <laughs> open the file or uh, import a file to this combustion data file and from then on you can run in prescribed mode uh, read the help file it will explain it much better but anyways uh, the parameters yep so rpm points and uh, timing uh, air fuel ratio that's the most important of the things the rest will be calculated for you by the burn rate uh, the turbulent model combustion efficiency is kind of a fudge factor and um, uh, I've set it at 0.9 now, or 0.9. Um, that's kind of high, but my cylinder with the running E85 and ported as it is, as it is supposed to, or is, as it will become, and with uh, the good transfer shape and the good combustion chamber shape and all that stuff and the good fuel, uh, should be up there with high efficiency. If you have a crap uh, chamber shape and crap fuel, maybe you are down at uh, even 0.75 or something like that. And so it's kind of a fudge factor. But uh, the, yeah, read about it in the uh, help file. Uh, nitro methane ratio uh, 0 to 1. I'm not using any nitro, so 0. Uh, number of RPM points, I've talked about that. Fuel type, regular, premium, unleaded 95, unleaded 100, methanol, ethanol, GP5, JP8, Avgas, or unleaded ethanol mix. So choose the fuel that uh, matches the one you're using. I'm not quite sure what regular or premium are. Uh, what's different for reg regular and premium, uh, as opposed to unleaded 95 and unleaded 100. But uh, I'm using uh, unleaded and ethanol mix now uh, and 0.85 ethanol that's because I'm using E85 or I'm going to use E85 unleaded 100 is what I've used before so uh, that's what's uh, clo what the closest match, match to uh, the, nine, the 99 uh, unleaded run I can get at, my, at the shell pump downtown 
Uh, yep, anyway, so um, that's the combustion uh, data. Uh, temperature, temperature data. Uh, there's default values here, uh, and you can just leave them. Uh, what I do, and this is a tip from Obli, is I uh, choose volt temperature a function of RPM, and then I uh, choose the start of the uh, power band and the uh, end of the power band. And at the start, I use or for pump fuel or avgas, you should choose uh, 325 degrees at the start of the power band and 425 at the end of the power band. I've chosen 225 and 325 because I'm using E85 and it runs a lot cooler than uh, than uh, petrol. Yep. Uh, so that's the um, the DAT 2T. So the the very creator model. Uh, exit. Oh yeah, I'll to show you one thing. Uh, the transfer um, in the edit transfer port uh, part, you can choose uh, passage layout. And here, if you measure all those angles, you will automatically get the flow widths, widths of all the ports. So a great tool. Uh, read about it in the help file and. Um, yeah, a great tool. Okay, then on to the simulator in mode 2T. Continue. Use previous project. So here you can choose a batch run or individual run. So individual run uh, is where you choose uh, one RPM point to simulate or more, uh, how many you like. Uh, you can if you choose batch run, you can have it run through uh, a RPM sweep, which you choose either from a file you create or you just input input the starting RPM, the final RPM, and the RPM increments you want. And just name uh, your run something suitable. Uh, you can choose if you want to display graphics or not. So if you don't display graphics, there's just a bunch of numbers. Um, showing up on the screen while the sim is running. If you choose graphics, uh, you will see the p uh, pressure traces of either the exhaust or the inlet uh, as you watch the sim run. So I'll, I can show you now just a quick um, individual run with uh, my engine as it is now. And uh, looking at the graphics of the pressure traces can tell you a lot about how your pipe is performing and other things, especially how if you look at the exodus trace, you can tell you a lot about what's wrong or what's right about your pipe. Uh, for how high pressure you have at the exhaust port open and before the exhaust is closing and where it happens and the, how low a depression you have around bottom dead center and uh, stuff like that. So I'll just show you what it looks like and um, and uh, just to leave it. <laughs> To leave this as short as possible, that's not the point, is it? But I, I could talk in, uh, I could use hours talking about this part. So just we'll have a look and uh, and I can maybe make a video with more um, more uh, information information later. Okay, I'll choose uh, seventeen thousand five hundred RPM. That's around peak power. Uh, one point, display graphics, and pause graphics after each run, no, exhaust trace, and we'll just watch it run. Okay, so here you can see the uh, exhaust, uh, the pressure at the exhaust port is the yellow yellow line, the pressure in the cylinder is the red one, and the pres pressure in the transfer ports are the green. So, um, I'll just pause it here, and we can have a little look. So as you can see, there's a lot of um, uh, the uh, the way or the pressure from the previous cycle is um, is strengthening or uh, it's uh, there's some super positioning as they call it here. So um, there's resonance uh, in the system and the pre uh, the the wave that got pushed off from the or the pressure that's left from the previous cycle because it was uh, colliding with the um, piston and moving back again up the pipe uh, down the pipe and then back again they are uh, uh, meeting up and there's uh, resonance and they're strengthening each other so 
as you can see, the press, the pr exhaust pressure doesn't start at one, which is uh, zero, uh, and below one is uh, uh, negative pressure. It starts off high and then it goes very high and down, and there's a deep depression around uh, bottom dead center, but it's uh, deep very late so uh, my pipe is probably a little bit too short so I have to play around with that but anyways and then it's uh, and you see it gets high again before the exhaust port, uh, exhaust port closes yeah I, I won't talk uh, much about this now but a great tool for uh, seeing what's going on and changing things and and yeah to to see what you need to do. Okay, so you've run a simulation. Now I I didn't. Uh, I just ran one um, at one RPM point. But say I ran a batch run uh, with a full RPM sweep or uh, so selected RPM sweep. I go into the post processor, post 2T. Okay. I choose plot options and performance and efficiency plots. There's a lot more here, but what you will mostly use is the performance and efficiency plots. Uh, I can choose horsepower, and I choose add file, and my SPX file, back to baseline. So say I, this was the run, uh, power average and torque. Here you can choose a lot of stuff. Um, to get someone something similar to a dyno reading, you choose power average and uh, torque. Press OK and OK, and you get the power curve and the torque curve. So uh, yeah, this is uh, this you've seen this kind of stuff before, I suppose. Uh, what's really great, or a very great tool for uh, in Engmod, is that you can instead of looking at the power and torque. You can look at two max, which is the unburnt gases maximum temperature in the cylinder, in the squish pan. And um, as you run the simulation, the program will tell you if you uh, have detonation in the cylinder. And by looking at the two max curve, as I'll do now, you can see uh, uh, where it's too high and how high it is, and you can uh, maybe pull back timing or uh, use a bigger stinger or less compression to get it low enough so it doesn't detonate. Uh, as I'm running E85, you can see the um, temperature is very low, 870 degrees max, uh, so that's far away from detonation. Uh, if you're around 950 and above, 970 maybe, then you are in the danger zone. But you also have to keep it as high as possible without detonation to get max power. So, um, yep, that's about it. I highly recommend that you um, use the $400 and buy this program. Uh, it's one of those things that you um, you don't know it before you have it. But when you have it, you just you can't live without it. It's so great and it saves you so much time and so much frustration from... Um, and ruin parts because you can do all the high, all the development or a lot of the development in software and then you have a great baseline for further uh, fine tuning in real life so without it you there's mostly educated guess guesses guesswork or uh, for me just a shot in the dark uh, ex not exactly but um, compared to having a mod uh, without it it's a shot in the dark so thanks for watching I know this is was this was a lot of rambling and uh, maybe not as organized as. Uh, <laughs> anyways, thanks for watching. Get Eng Mod, extremely good software. Thank you.